All right, Hasbro PulseCon 2020 has just recently concluded and they had a lot of epic reveals. I'd like to show off some of my favorite reveals during the whole convention and what my thoughts on them are. So let's get right to it. First up is the Dungeons and Dragons, Drizzt and Gunwiver. Uh, I used to play Dungeons and Dragons when I was younger. Didn't really, didn't really do well in this game. I watched the cartoon, you know, it was a fun, fun piece of property, uh, pop culture, Dungeons and Dragons, but I never really got around to really playing hardcore uh, the game and just really being a fan. So I think this was a great idea on the part of Hasbro, but uh, the interest is just not really there for me. There's no emotional attachment or investment to this franchise. So I'm afraid I'm gonna pass on this, but the figure looks absolutely amazing. Fantastic detail. I'd love to just do a review and pose this figure around. Yep, very, very nice. Next up, some G.I. Joes. Wow, G.I. Joes just keep coming. And the wallet, the bank accounts of collectors are just screaming for, to Hasbro to just stop it with these reveals. Luckily for us, these new reveals are slated to be released uh, early next year or first quarter of next year. So that's great. That'll give us enough time to save up and all that. Zartan and the Cobra Infantry. These two are absolutely must have for me. I'll probably pre-order them on Kalil Collectibles. Who knows, but definitely, definitely gotta, gotta get these guys. Zartan, so reminiscent of the original uh, 3.75 inch, even the backpack shape, the way he looks with that midriff and uh, the hood, the mask. Cobra Trooper just looking spectacular. I have to get this. And I know this thing is going to be hoarded in scalp because a lot of people will be army building this, but wow, very, very well done Hasbro. Next, Cobra Viper and Firefly. One of the very first Cobra Troopers I had was actually the Viper. And it has a lot of sentimental value because I you know, brought it along with me um, when, I, when I brought G.I. Joe's. So this, I don't know, I, I, I could possibly get it. Firefly definitely I'm getting. Um, frustration of mine, I never got a Firefly back in the 80s and I just always wanted a Firefly. So when I was still collecting 3.75 inch Joe's, and the modern adaptation, I'd always get a Firefly. Even the movie G.I. Joe figures, I would get Firefly. So this one, no brainer, absolutely must get it. The Viper, uh, this one I'm gonna wait and see. I'm not gonna pre-order this. I will probably have to see it in store if that visor I think is the make it or break it for me. Uh, the deal breaker would be if it's not as chrome or shiny as I want it to be, then I'll probably skip pass up on this figure. And I hope that goggles, those visors, will easily fit on that helmet so it'll look like how he looked like in the 80s. Next up, some 3.75 G.I. Joes. You know, I've been trying to hold back on these because I told myself I've quit collecting the 3.75 inch line. Uh, a couple of hobby shops already were selling Storm Shadow Snake Eyes and the Baroness and I've really held out and just really had self-control because I don't want to get sucked back into the 3.75 inch line. I told myself I'm done with that. It's not 100%, but Hasbro is really making it difficult. For, for collectors like me and these look absolutely amazing and they bring back a lot of memories in the 80s 90, and early part of the 90s before I was collecting Star Wars and Transformers G.I. Joes and He-Man they were my go-to toys and yeah we'll have to wait and see but I, I doubt I'll be getting any of this for, the, for those of you who are expecting reviews in this scale I'm sorry to disappoint but I probably won't be getting into this line one thing I did notice uh, also is that Hasbro is now re-releasing their own version of the Zoids I think back in the day Zoids were made by Tonka or was it Bandai either one of those but I think Tonka was already absorbed by Hasbro so they have the rights for the Zoids and they look amazing the colors i mean even the designs they look a lot more solid and 
Like I said, very tempting, but I'm trying to hold back so I don't get sucked into this because back in the day, the Zoids, they were fun to build, but after you built them, they were much like Legos. You just, you just have to leave them around. You can't really do too much with them. And a lot of them were motorized, but no, I think I have to be strong and just not, not get sucked into this black hole, much like the 3.75 inch figures. Next up, some Power Rangers. My favorite Power Rangers of all time were really the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Um, I just started watching that show uh, when I was a kid and it was revolutionary back in the day. And for Hasbro to come up with these amazing figures, um, I tried purchasing some of them and, and I really wanna get into this line, but I don't wanna get in if I'm if I can't go full blast on it all the way in. So probably not. I I tried the White Ranger. If you remember, I did review the White Ranger and you know, I don't think I'm 100% with this line. So I doubt I'll be getting the Power Rangers. So like I mentioned in my collection update review, I can only collect so much, uh, so much toy lines, Marvel Star Wars and and, and Transformers are just my staples. And I added one more, which is G.I. Joe. And I don't think I can afford to add any more. If you guys support me on Patreon in a couple months from now, we'll see. Maybe I'll have enough funds to continue another line. Yeah, look, look at what Hasbro is doing. Come on, how difficult. It's so difficult to resist not getting these figures, not wanting to get these figures. Okay, Ghostbusters. Uh, unfortunately, I've already quit collecting Ghostbusters. This is an amazing, amazing product. I'm, I'm pretty sure a lot of collectors are just gonna go after this Ecto-1 in the 1 12th scale. And it's a shame that I already quit the line. And at least for the moment, I don't see myself really being a hardcore collector for Ghostbusters. I absolutely love the Ghostbusters, but it's really gonna be very difficult for me to collect it. And um, it, it's something that, you know, once you get all four of them and the Ecto-1, maybe the fire station, and that's it. It's, it's for me, I don't see myself collecting every single classic vintage figure, all the ghosts, all the other characters in the movie. Probably not. I don't think I'll be dipping back into this line, so sorry. But it looks really nice. Um, one thing that really made me this helped me decide decide not to get, go back into the Ghostbusters uh, was I did notice that this particular release is not the 80s Ecto-1. It is going to be the 2020 or 2021 movie uh, Ghostbusters that stars uh, those act, the actor from Stranger Things. It kind of looks like a Stranger Things movie, but that looks to be the Ecto-1 they're going to use because of the rusted, battle-damaged, uh, design on it. So uh, I think that made the decision easier. It's not the vintage classic uh, Ghostbusters So I'm probably not gonna get it, but I'm pretty sure Hasbro is gonna give us an all-white version that, That's non valid that's pristine color. It's gonna be an exclusive or something like that. And you know Hasbro pretty sure they're gonna do that So yep, very nice. Oh the ghost popper. I think I had this as a kid. Oh My god, the old Kenner uh, toy. I can't remember if my brothers and I had this. It, it it looks eerily familiar. I honestly think I had these. I had this set for some... I, I, I don't know, but it would be nice to actually get it again. But uh, sadly, no. No more Ghostbusters toys for me. Next up, some Marvel Legends. Uh, Hellfire Club Minion or Guard or member. No, I don't think so. I've pre-ordered the Hellfire set, but I think that's it. If they do any more of the characters, maybe, but I don't think this is... No, no, I don't think this is going to be part of my collection. Sorry. Next up, the Avengers Marvel Legends series. Wave 2 of the game vs. Avengers uh, with some comic series figures. The Billy figure is the Hulk and... or Mr. Fix, Joe Fix It. Uh, I like the character, I honestly do, but the wave is just not doing it for me. No, this one's just a repainted Star Boost armor with Tony Stark head. No, I, no, I, I don't think so. Uh, 
Falcon. It looks great. It was only a matter of time they were going to do this because it already got the Vulture, but no. Definitely no. No. Kang is tempting, but I have no emotional investment in the villain, so probably not. But it looks terrific. Even this Build-A-Figure, absolutely amazing. People are, I know they're going to sell, this figure is going to go for at least $80 to $100 online. <laughs> and, oh, this was interesting. Uh, the, I, I read up a lot in the Iron Man comic book, and this is Yocasta, uh, one of the sentient um, synths or androids that really fought for the rights of uh, inorganic sentient beings. So... This is interesting. I have some emotional investment to it, but no, I don't, I don't think so. I think it's a pass for me. I think the entire wave is a pass for me, even if the build a figure is absolutely great. So, okay, Target exclusive. This is what I hate about Hasbro. Come on, man. You know that all of your fans are desperately searching for a rogue figure. And what do you do? You, you, you put it as an exclusive. How? sadistic is this i'm sorry hasbro but you got to do better come on you can put gambit as a target exclusive fine but don't make rogue an exclusive i mean you've heard the clamor fans are just you know complaining that the rogue the juggernaut wave rogue is going for bonkers online and hasbro says okay we'll give you a break we'll reissue rogue and what do they do they make her a limited release as a Target exclusive. Really, Hasbro? But um, uh, knowing the sellers out here in, in Manila, these are this is this is probably going to go on pre-order, but at a slightly probably higher price than the U.S. Um, uh, pre-orders, and it's it, I'm pretty sure it's gonna we're gonna see pre-orders of this figure going from about. 38 37 dollars to 40 even 40 dollars i believe uh maybe 40 dollars retail but if you pre-order it is probably at least going to be 36 37 dollars i'm pretty sure but a lot of collectors are going to be after that and we'll bite the bullet and pay that 38 40 dollars for that figure it's a shame exclusives just make collecting life very inconvenient and hasbro's not helping us but thank you for re-releasing it, but no thanks that it's a Target exclusive. I mean, look at this. The yellow is a little bit more like a lemon yellow. It's a, it's a lot paler type of yellow. The green is great. Kind of a retro head sculpt though. So if I do get this, I'll probably head swap the old one because I like, I like the older head sculpt better, but sucks that it's an exclusive. Gambit, this is a pass for me, sorry. Firestar. Huh, not a big fan of the mold. Had they bunched this as Firestar, Iceman, and that classic Spider-Man, they, if they repacked the, the retro-carded Iceman and the retro-carded vintage Spider-Man and packed it as a three-pack, I'd be on board with it. But as it is, maybe, I don't know. I loved watching that show, Spider-Man and his amazing friends. If I'm able to get a Spider-Man figure, the vintage retro figure, before this one gets released, then I'm getting her. Okay? Oh my goodness. X-Men. I decided, you know, Marvel Legends for me. I'm going to try and cut back on the Avengers and other figures. And I'm just going to focus on the Krakowans, the mutants. Just sticking with this. This is 100% for me so that I don't waste any more money on figures that are not 100%, just stick with the mutants. So Magneto, House of N, looking spectacular. I am absolutely gonna get this. Professor Xavier, well, very simple, but that's how he, he was in the, comic, in the comic book. He is currently in the comic book as Professor Xavier in this mode with Cerebro on his head. I just wish, you know, because there's literally very little paint apps, no accessories. I hope Hasbro is generous enough to give us an extra head, much like what they've done with Magneto. Uh, well, I no, they're not giving us an extra head. I hope they're getting us unmasked or head sculpts without the helmet. Same with this one. I hope Hasbro does that because that's just fan service for all of us. And I hope they do that. That would be terrific if they did. 
Moira McTaggart, yes! Yes, I think this is the first time we're getting a Moira McTaggart action figure in the 112th scale. Definitely, definitely getting this one. Arcade, no, no, no investment in this character. I hate this villain. One of the villains I could care less for, no. Uh, Spider-Gwen, maybe, maybe. I did love the movie, but I love the comic book character with Spider-Ham, maybe, maybe, I'm iffy about this one. Miles Morales, same, maybe, but I have to get both. If, if I don't get the other, I'm not gonna get the other. And there's a big chance I won't. The mere fact that I'm thinking about it means I'm not 100% about it. Stiltman, no, this is a no for me. No investment in this figure. Red Ninja, I don't know. No, no, uh, pass for me. Uh, I do have to wait and see what the other figures are in this wave though. Silver Surfer with Mjolnir, the black, Silver Surfer Black, or the Black Surfer. Uh, no, sorry. Thanos, this is interesting. I sold off all my Thanos, Thanos figures, and this one has the snapping um, hand sculpt with Infinity Gauntlet. I think I'm gonna get this. I don't know. The classic looking Thanos. I think I'm gonna get this. Yes, I do believe so. I think I'm gonna get this. I think Hasbro got jealous with Marvel Select because everyone's getting that Marvel Select Thanos. I think I'm gonna get this. Dormammu. No, easy pass for me. Pass, pass. These are like the 3.75 inch, five points of articulation, retro, super retro figures. No, Hasbro, you are wasting money on this. I. I honestly think that there are still 3.75 inch Marvel Universe collectors and they could have done some fan service had they made these figures fully articulated. They've, you know, updated the figures, the classic figures, put them in the retro carded, retro cards. They would make a killing, I kid you not. They can sell them for same price as Marvel Legends. Oh my goodness. But instead they give this, those things are gonna be peg warmers. They're no, they'll sell a few, they'll sell, they'll sell several, I guess, but I, I think a better business move would have made them fully articulated. There's a limited amount of figures. They could have given the 118th scale fans something to look forward to, but they didn't. This is tempting. The Stormbreaker uh, role play game. Oh my God, role play accessory. It really is nice. I've seen the video, it does light up and all that, but uh, once I get this, you'll have to get the Mjolnir and uh, no, no, no space for me. No, I, I, this is, oh, I have to control myself, no. Star Wars, okay, probably the most highly anticipated reveal of Star Wars is this, Jar Jar Binks. The, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, who am I kidding? I'm never gonna purchase this, sorry. Boba Fett. I might just get this. I might just get this. This was Return of the Jedi Boba Fett. I actually like Boba Fett in episode six more than episode five. And this one has the flame blast. And look at the colors. Yes, yes, definitely getting this one. And he's got that split gun where he gets sliced. Anyway. Really? Okay. Yes. Yes. Definitely Boba Fett. The armor. I told myself initially I was going to wait for the regular regular release uh, for this figure. But the armor is all about the accessories. So if you get the regular release, there'll be a lot of missing accessories and it wouldn't be as fun. But you'll have to pay double just to get her. So I'm a little bit torn. But... I might just go ahead and get this exclusive simply because of the accessories. Because if you get the regular release, you'll probably just get these two. It's fine, but this this is a great piece. This is a great looking accessory, but I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'll just, I'm iffy. Probably the regular release. Okay, some archive figures. Cody, no, I, I'm done with clone troopers. 
No, I don't think so. No. Thrawn, I love this figure, but I, I've said goodbye to, to them and I don't think I'll be getting him again. Luke, maybe. Maybe. I'm not really particular about that Tauntaun or the... Um, what's that beast he cut off the arm? The Wampa. No, I wasn't really big fans of those. But this one has a better uh, face painting tech head sculpt. And it is Luke Skywalker. It's like Darth Vader. I, I do have a affinity for Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker figures. So I might just go ahead and get this one. Han, no. This one's a pass for me. Okay. Uh... No, as I said, 3.75 inch is definitely not in my target site right now. This is an amazing, amazing piece, but no. Thank you, Hasbro, but no. Ahsoka's lightsabers. Oh my goodness. You know, I have not dabbled or dipped my uh, dipped into the uh, Elite Force FX or Force FX Elite lightsabers. I've not bought a single one. The Kylo Ren or the Revan. I was tempted to get the Revan, but uh, I, I held back. But this one, the Ahsoka Tano lightsaber. Oh boy, I might just go ahead and get this. Much like the Darth Maul lightsaber, you have to pick up two. I'm just not sure if I'm gonna get it early or I'm going to wait for it to go on clearance. There's a big chance I'm just gonna wait for it to go on clearance, but this is definitely in my sights. I would love to get my hands on Ahsoka's lightsabers. Looks great. I think you have an option for blue or a white blade, so you could do like Clone Wars or Rebels. So very nice, well played Hasbro. Even has a Kyber crystal, oh man. Oh, look at that, look at that. Yes, I'm definitely getting it. My only decision parameter is whether to get it on clearance or to get it on the first release and hopefully get a discount. Find a store that's giving a discount on it. And finally, finally, this is probably the best ever, most epic reveal from Star Wars. Oh my goodness. Christmas themed troopers, stormtroopers. Oh my God, Hasbro. So epic, oh my god. I can't, honestly can't imagine any collector who would not want to get these. Jeez, Hasbro, you're throwing money away with these figures. So Hasbro, please explain to me the rationale for these. Seriously? Really, Hasbro? No, not even on clearance. I would not pick these figures up, even if they were a dollar each. No. Wait, a dollar each? Hmm. No, no, definitely. Big fat no. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay, some Transformers. I did miss out on the Takaratomi versions of the Legends. They're, they're Transformers Legends 2-pack of the Autobot clones. And it was this was predictable. The, we had the Decepticon clones. It was only a matter of time before they give us and repack and re-release the, the Takaratomi versions of the Autobot clones. So yes, definitely getting these. R.E.D. You know, R.E.D. is a mixed bag for me. Uh, I promised myself I would stay away from non-transforming Transformers. Uh, the same goes for Funko Pops. Those G1 Funko Pops Transformers look amazing, but I'm trying to stay away from them. I will prop the, this RC looks absolutely amazing, fantastic. Hasbro's doing the 112 uh, six inch figures for Black Series and Marvel Legends and Power Rangers. Why not do Transformers, right? This is the Action Masters revived or resurrected. So I think I'm gonna get them only if they go on clearance, like 60%, 70% clearance, maybe, or 50% clearance, maybe I'll go get them. But other than that, no, the RED is, I don't think I'll, I'll be getting them anytime soon. And now for some Transformers Prime reissues. These are actually the Takaratomi versions of Transformers Prime figures that we never got. And this Megatron is looking terrific with all those chrome bits. I mean, come on. I mean, I've quit the entire Transformers Prime line, but this figure is gonna get me sucked back in. Even so with these two, I mean, wow. I've never done a review of Breakdown. 
I got both versions from Takara Tomi, the blue one and the black one, the stylus breakdown and this war breakdown, but I never reviewed them. So if I do get this set, I might just review them for you guys. I've done a review of the Jet V Econ, but this is tempting. This is very tempting. Um, actually, a week ago, I had an opportunity to purchase one set. It was an advanced release, a hobby shop was selling it, and it was going for $80. It was ridiculously priced. I thought it was just going to be like $60, $65, but I wasn't about to spend $80 on a, on a couple figures that I, I from a line that I've already quit collecting. So I don't know. Maybe if they restock, they're sold out now, but I might just go ahead and get this. We'll see. Okay, on to the Kingdom figures. Uh, I'm not really excited about this. I mean, it's a great skeleton dinosaur transformer, but no, sorry. Rat Trap, yes. I'm pretty sure this thing is gonna be scalped and hoarded like crazy. I mean, a non-deluxe class Rat Trap that's going for MicroMaster uh, pack price, for about $13 out here in Manila. This is easy. This is, people are gonna hoard this and scalp this online like crazy. Anyway, Optimus Prime, I was surprised about this. I mean, I've heard about this, but I wasn't sure why Hasbro did this. I mean, the whole War for Cybertron trilogy line was all about scale. And for them to do go back and do the whole legend sc scale, legends class figures that are off scale uh, was a mystery to me. And I don't know, she's a popular character. I might just go ahead and get one just to review it. And uh, we'll see. And then, yes, more of these dino skeletons. No, sorry. Cheetor, yeah, sure. You know, I think I'm planning, I'll probably be planning to get all Beast Wars figures and just review them and if I still am not a hundred percent after everything said and done I might just go ahead and sell them off as a set but for Beast Wars fans this is amazing these are actually very amazing Black Arachnia one of my favorite Predacons on the show was Black Arachnia terrorize oh my god uh, this one's a must-have definitely for me Warpath, finally we get a G1 looking Warpath, not that Megatron repaint. So yes, definitely excited to pick this one up. T-Rex Megatron or Beast Wars Megatron, a leader class. Oh my goodness, one of my favorite Beast Wars Transformers. I don't know, maybe. Like I said, I'll get all the Beast Wars figures and probably sell them off as a set. This is nice. This is actually very nice. It's a nice upgrade on his, uh, even on the skin of the gorilla. I think this is great. Um, it does not seem to be show accurate because on the show his skin was much smoother, but it's great. It actually looks great for me. And it has everything. It's bordering on Masterpiece and the original toy. Really liking this one. This is probably my favorite out of all the Transformers reveals, the Cyclonus. Uh, I, I, the Combiner Wars was amazing, but I had to sell it off because I knew deep inside Hasbro was gonna give us a more G1-esque uh, Cyclonus. And I love this. I love what they're doing with this one. It's like the, the way the Seeker molds, the cone heads, they are sort of upscaling their original Transformers universe, the Lux class figures, and this one looks great. With a, I, I reckon there's a few more bits of extra transformation, but the transformation is probably gonna be very similar to the Transformers universe or Henke uh, Cyclonus, which I'm very excited for because that was one of my favorite, all-time favorite uh, universe figures, uh, Generations figures for that matter, Because, but I had to let them go because they were not Clearly, they were not in scale with the other figures. And now, we got something that's perfectly in scale. The new packaging also looks great. And this is Hasbro's way of decreasing uh, plastic and non-biodegradable materials for their packaging. It's a very small window, and as you can see inside, there's no longer that shell. Uh, it's just uh, some straps or some twist ties, and that's it. Um, you know what, I wouldn't even be surprised if they didn't put a plastic window on that. If it's just blank, it's like a space you could touch the figure. I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case, but it's in their best interest to put a window there to put some plastic just to cover it up, prevent dust and and some 
mischievous collectors who just probably steal the figure or just vandalize the figure or something. So it's looking great. I love the artwork, but I'm really glad they kept the window so you could actually see what you're getting and pick ones with better paint apps. Same with the deluxe class figures. The uh, weaponizers or the micromasters. Legend scaled core class figures. Yes, almost same packaging, um, but it's okay. And that's it. What do you guys think? Are you all excited about the new reveals, epic reveals of uh, Hasbro for PulseCon or were they just, they just bored you to death? I mean, which ones are your favorites? I mean, I'd like to know in the comment section below. And as always, hit that notification bell so you never miss out on any of my latest video reviews. If it's your first time here, please subscribe. And if you want to support the channel, help me make more uh, reviews of your favorite toys, collectibles, and maybe expand it to another line, please do check out my Patreon account. Um, the minimum is $3 a month. It's small. Uh, it's a very small fee I'm asking just to help me support uh, the the channel, my YouTube channel. The Patreon channel will eventually have exclusive videos there, but right now it's just mirroring my videos here on YouTube. But more importantly, your support on Patreon will help me do more videos in the future. So thank you in advance for all of those of you. Uh, I'll check it out and give me support. If you just want to support me by watching my videos, that's great. That's more than enough. I'm very grateful to everyone who stuck it out with me and my channel. There you go, folks. Uh, till next time, thanks for watching.